Hey, it's Corey from Mahalo.com. You're about to see some screen tests of people who applied to be the host for our cooking channel. This is your chance to comment and tell us who you'd like to see become the new host for cooking. If you think you could do a better job and you live in the LA area, we encourage you to submit an online response telling us why you could be the next great Mahalo host. We really appreciate your feedback. Hi, I'm Christina Jackson, and I'm here today sharing what I know with you I've been cooking for quite some time now, and I'd say about approximately two and a half years. I really enjoy it. Um, some things that really inspire me are cooking locally, seasonally, and with organic products. Um, I love to go to the farmer's market. I love to uh, throw dinner parties for my friends. And I'm actually now putting that out there and sharing that with everybody because I think it's important for everyone to learn and be able to do this on their own and be given the tools necessary to do so. So what I've done, um, I've created a blog. It's called The Whole Idea with Christina Jackson .tumblr.com. So you can um, look me up there and see what I'm talking about and see what I'm offering and all my recipes are up there. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and it's, to me, it's more about a lifestyle, hence the whole idea. It's about living clean, eating good food, and having a great time naturally. So um, I'd love for you to journey with me and experience all that life has to offer. Two and a half years ago, I decided to jump in the kitchen because I'd worked in the restaurant industry for a long time now. And one thing that really attracted me was the food. I love food. I love how food brings people together. I like how food makes you feel. And I love the way it makes me feel when I work with it. So um, I started exploring that a little more. And actually, ironically, in a, um, in a atmosphere where it was completely vegan food, and it showed me that vegan food can be good food. So I, I've learned the traditional ways of cooking as well as vegan and raw and vegetarian. So I you know, come from so many different worlds and have so much to bring to the table and I'd love to be able to share that with you. Hi, I'm Christina Jackson. We're gonna be making my famous Brussels sprout recipe today, which I just picked up some fresh Brussels sprouts from the Santa Monica's Farmer's Market. I'm so excited to share this recipe with you because it's one of my most favorite recipes to make and foods to eat. So, here we go. Let's grab our Brussels sprouts. And what we're gonna to need to do is prep those first. And we're gonna take off the, the leaves of the Brussels sprouts. And we just want the crisp green freshness in the center. So once we have those, let's cut off the edge and let's quarter those. And we're gonna get our pan nice and hot, put some extra virgin olive oil in there, and throw in our Brussels sprouts and get them nice and brown. We want the edges brown. We want it to get a little crisp, a little flavorful. So let those stay there for, I'd say about two minutes or so, and brown them up. Let's, let's stir them around. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some white wine, and we're gonna add some garlic. We want those to steam a little bit and get a little softer because we did put those in raw. Now, let that go for a little while. Let the white wine cook down and let it get some flavor. And then we can add some Dijon mustard in there and some extra virgin olive oil with a little salt and pepper, and it's gonna give it a little nice tang flavor. You can choose to add a little sugar or agave nectar if you like to sweeten it up, but that's up to you. Sometimes I like to do that. Um, so let that cook down, let it cook a little while, and then, simple as that, you have your Brussels sprouts, and that's my famous Brussels sprout recipe. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Judith Jones, and I love cooking. I've worked at some of the top restaurants in the world, at Nobu, Rayuela, um, David Ballou, and I just love, love, love traveling and discovering new cuisines and cooking, cooking for my friends, cooking for everyone. I have a food and travel blog, uh, which I love writing on, and um, I travel around the world and discover some of the best foods. And I love eating too, so it's great. Hi, I'm Judith Jones, and today I'm gonna to make a shrimp stir fry, one of my favorites. Now, I love Asian food, so this is combining a little bit of all the Asian cuisines, Thai, Japanese, anyway. So we're gonna get started uh, with the shrimp. Get some fresh shrimp, um, maybe around like a dozen is good. Uh, fry it in a pan with sesame oil. I love frying with sesame oil. It makes, makes a stir fry the best possible. So we'll set that first. And then we're gonna cut all the veggies you like, onions, zucchini, uh, uh, eggplant, 
uh, red pepper, we'll cut all of those, oh, don't forget corn, uh, cut all those and let them simmer in a pan with sesame oil again. So keep them simmered. Uh, and then we're going to add a little bit of soy sauce because that's what makes it nice and salty and good. So we'll add that to the pan of veggies right there. Then, of course, once the um, shrimp are done, now you don't cook the shrimp too much, around two, a minute to two minutes is good. Uh, we're going to add the shrimp to the veggies and stir that in right there. Now, I would let it simmer a little bit and get those, it depends how you like the veggies, but let it simmer and get those veggies nice and soft if you like it like that. Uh, Stir it in, keep it there, and what I like to add, of course you can add noodles and you can add all those uh, wonderful, you know, you can add rice, whatever you like, but I love to add cashew nuts. Yes, cashew nuts make the dish the best. So we'll add a little bit of cashew nuts right at the end of the dish, and that's it, a shrimp stir fry. Hi, my name is Corinne Bird. I live in California and I've been cooking since I was six. I started out, I remember once I went to my mom and I asked her how to make bread and she said, Corinne, the, easy, the hardest thing about making bread is letting the dough rise. And she woke up in that afternoon, she used to do the night shifts at her, at her job and we had bread. And I've loved it ever since. I moved here to Nanny. I worked as a nanny for four years and I cooked the meals for a family of four. And my policy in making food, my, my inherent belief is that food should taste good and be healthful. I've lost 60 pounds since high school and it's because of diet and exercise and a lot of it has to do with diet. I love making food that tastes good as I said, but I do it with little helpful hints to make it fun, make it easy, make it quick to be on the table and to serve everything that you need it to do. Hi, I'm Corinne Bird, and today we're going to be making bagel sandwiches. So I like using whole wheat bagels because it's better for your body. I like to top those with avocado. Avocado is a really great monosaturated fat, and it tastes great with bagels. Second, I like to put on tomato. I like a little bit of red onion. I really, really love spinach. Spinach has got a lot of vitamins. It's one of the best greens out there. And I like to top it with salmon. Smoked salmon is really good if you go to your local grocer, you can get something really great there. And some capers. Capers are great for the fridge, you can keep them in the fridge for a long time and they enhance a lot of different dishes, good thing to keep around. Top it off with your other side of bagel with some mustard. I like to use mustard that has no sugar in it, if you can't taste the sugar why would you put it in there? And voila, you got yourself a sandwich. If you really want to be fancy you can toast it. And if you really want to be a little extravagant, some Swiss cheese on there, put it under your broiler for a minute, it's going to be awesome. Hello, I'm Leah Rose and I'm here to talk about cooking and especially my experience in cooking. Uh, when I was 9, 10, 11, I started to veer away from what my mom was cooking, which was tofu and carob and I enjoyed cooking cheese and chocolate. So it's kind of where it started. I wanted to eat the really good yummy things my mom wouldn't cook. So I started there and I'm um, testing out recipes and different things. I love to follow a recipe, but I've also done some improving on my own, um, especially with baking, but definitely cooking as well. And recently over the last, I would say eight months, I have a small group of friends. We get together like clockwork every month and we have a dinner club and we cook uh, dishes on a theme and um, I, I get to pick my own recipe, I get to kick, pick my own dish and bring it to the party and we all share and grub and that's what I would like to do is share my grub with you. Hello, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Leo Rose and today we will be preparing bacon wrap dates. Now it's kind of a typical Spanish tapas kind of share with your friends little bite. For me, I could eat a whole plate, so make as many as you'd like. If you're sharing with friends, what you're going to need is some dates, <laughs> the ones with the pits, the really fat, juicy ones, about a half, to, half pound to a pound of bacon, and some manchego cheese. Now manchego cheese, if you haven't had it, is a Spanish cheese. It's hard, kind of like a Parmesan, has the very same flavor. So um, what you're going to do is, first, I kind of like to get everything prepared. So take your cheese and cut it into little chunks, just little cubes, maybe about a fourth, fourth of an inch in diameter. And, um, so, and do that. And then what I like to do is take the bacon and cut it each strip in half. So you're going to need a half piece of bacon for each date. 
Okay, now for the dates, you do want to get the ones with the pits because they're really, really fresh and juicy. Um, the ones that you find like in the bag, they're, they're a little bit more um, dry. So we want them nice and juicy. Make a little incision in each date with your little knife and take out the pit. Definitely won't, don't want that. What we're going to replace the pit with is the cheese. Mm -hmm. from Wisconsin. I know what I'm doing, believe me. So you're gonna take the cheese, put it right in there. Bacon. You're gonna take the half piece of bacon and wrap it around real nice and good. Stick your toothpick right through it. So do that to all of your dates. You're gonna put it on a pan. Set your broiler when it's nice and hot. Stick those, that pan of dates right in the broiler. About 10 minutes. And then what you're gonna do is take it out and flip them over because I don't know about you, but I love my bacon really, really crispy. So you wanna make sure that you get all the sides nice and delicious. Um, what ends up happening is it kind of caramelizes with all the juices of the date and it's oh, nature's candy. It's delicious. So as soon as that's done, I would say 20 minutes in total. Take that on out. Be careful because it's hot. Put them on a plate. Share if you want. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. My next video will be my famous mouthwatering tuna casserole. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching. That was actually way better. Yeah.